A night of German food, dancing, and of course beer. Oktoberfest is back for its 22nd year here in the border city. And the local German Heritage Society is busy preparing for the night's festivities. As Bart Pettiesek reports, it's not just a great way to spend an October night, but it also has deep roots in German history. Drink and eat. It's a cultural event. It's a party. Dressed head to toe in Lederhosen and a Stein in hand. Mo Aschenbrenner takes his German heritage seriously. He says the event dates back all the way to 1810, as Munich celebrated the marriage of Prince Ludwig and Princess Therese. It's continued ever since. It's been going on for 203 and, and, uh, years. It's been canceled 24 times for war or cholera or whatever. Started off, I think, as a day, went to 16 days, uh, sometime as 17, sometime as 18. And from Munich to Lloydminster, Oktoberfest events have sprung up all across Canada. Aschenbrenner says the border city's version isn't the largest in the country, but it's had its own share of success. Bavarian Schuplotler say, hey, we're the best Oktoberfest in all of Alberta and Saskatchewan, so if they say it, it's got to be true. And this year's event should be no different. The Midnight Luncheon will include a variety of German food and drink, as well as a live band to keep the crowd entertained. All money made from the event will go to the local German Heritage Society. But we're an organization that, uh, you know, is, is there for ex expanding and understanding and the enjoyment of the culture of German-speaking peoples from all around the world. And, and it's a night so Aschenbrenner says shouldn't be missed. I challenge anybody to find an Emerald's Dance anywhere, hey, with a full meal for $25. Like, I challenge anybody to find an event that affordable. Bart Pidiasek, New Cap News. All right, now if you want to get your hands on tickets, they can be picked up at either Cliff Rose for Clothes or at the Lloydminster Animal Hospital and doors open tomorrow night at 8. Well, it's an organization you may not have heard of, but it's one that is taking big steps to preserve land and, and enhance land in our region. Now, Kyle Galver has more on alternative land use services in this week's Egg Report. Alternative land use services has a simple yet revolutionary goal to create a healthy landscape that sustains agriculture, wildlife, and natural spaces for all Canadians. The ALICE program had its kickoff in 2010, in the summer of 2010, and uh, to date has close to 2,000 acres of land protected uh, and developing nature's benefits. ALICE is set up underneath the Agricultural Service Board in the county of Vermilion River. Chairman Daryl Watts says the program has received great feedback from local farmers and producers. The future of ALICE just keeps growing. We have uh, a really good buy-in from the agriculture community, so th there's a lot of people really encouraged by what they see. Recently, ALICE received a boost from the Alberta government. The province has officially recognized the county of Vermilion River as a wetland restoration agency. The designation gives the county the authority to access provincial mitigation money for restoration of wetlands within municipal boundaries. It's the first time a county in Alberta has received this distinction. Ducks Unlimited was originally the original program, but we are the first municipality in Alberta to be identified as a wetlands mitigation agency. So quite an honor and uh, we're very glad that the province chose us. And Watt feels the designation proves Alice is taking steps in the right direction. It shows that our program was well done and, and, and is the model that they're looking for in the future. Kyle Gallagher, New Cap News.